Hey y'all, welcome to Little Acre Homestead. My name is Rowan. And I'm Phil. And today we're doing our seed inventory for the year. As you can see, we have quite a lot to go through because I tend to overbuy seeds. So we're gonna try to not do that this year and be a little bit more careful about what we buy and using what we buy. And using what we have. So tonight our goal is to see everything that we've got and identify what we really liked to grow and then any gaps that we have where we'd like to get things that we think will grow better. All right, let's get into it. So first up is our box from the garden that I had planned to plant in 2023 when we first moved to the house. It's a hot mess. Uh, for those of you who watched this video, uh, you know that we were not able to plant a large garden this year. Uh, so these seeds you know, obviously did not go to waste, but the planting certainly did, that's okay. Uh, we learned a lot this year and I feel a little more prepared to plant out what we had planned in some form. So let's inventory what we have here and then we'll get into the rest of our boxes. All right, so we've got a Dixie Yellow Crookneck Summer Squash from Gurney's. Um, I definitely want to grow that next year. Sure. Okay. Yeah, we tend to do a good job eating that with um, any of our pan roasted vegetables and occasionally with pasta. So as a little look into what we're doing here, we're planning out or writing out the seeds that we have. And I'm just gonna put a little star next to the ones that we think we might want to grow. That's a terrible star. There we go. Okay. So yellow crook next squash for next year. All right, next up we have the shishito pepper. I, we really wanted to grow these uh, last year because we haven't gotten to try them before. Um, and as far as I'm aware, the like two peppers we got out of the test bed were not shishitos. What do you think? I'm, I'm pro if we have room. I think they are, um, I'd like to do them, but they're a lower priority than some of the stuff that we know and know we will use. Okay, so we'll maybe do key at the top stars yes check is maybe it's a little confusing but it is what it is all right so shishito peppers so next up we have anaheim peppers again tried to grow them did not have success thoughts um anaheims i think we have used in the past so i'd be a little bit more for your growing anaheims than some of the other stuff we've used them for um like a stuffed pepper um they're good mild to hot pepper yeah, they've got a good heat level. Okay, so we'll go with like a yeah. So next up, we've got the lemon drop pepper in 2022. This was our most prolific pepper. We're still eating so many lemon drops in the form of cowboy candy and then just plain canned peppers. They are very delicious. Uh, because they were so prolific, I'd really like to grow them again. I thought they tasted really good too. I agree. They were, again, a nice uh, in-between mild and medium pepper. Uh, comparable to jalapeno, but with a little bit of a like citric taste to them. Um, they were really good. All right, next up is the trio of orange, pumpkin, and lemon spice peppers. Um, these are jalapenos. I really like them in concept, but off camera, Phil and I were talking about how they feel like a vanity pepper. We've never really gotten them to turn color and they don't taste different than a, any other variety of jalapeno to us. So we're gonna skip them. They also weren't very prolific. So I think we'll take this year off. Yeah, we did get one of these two. I can't remember which to start turning and they tasted exactly like a regular jalapeno. So I don't think it's worth it for how difficult they were compared to regular jalapenos. Next we have the Serrano Tempiqueño. Tempiqueño, yeah. Okay. Uh, these also are very prolific for us, except they're very small. They're about, I'd say, at maximum a two inch. At least that's how big we got them. Yeah, so I'm not sure if that's something we're doing or if that's the variety. I'm not opposed to growing them again. They're kind of a pain in the butt to preserve, though. That's true. Why don't we make them a maybe? Um, I think the jalapenos might be our big mainstay, and the lemon drops worked out so well. Next, we have the Ancho Poblano. I love a poblano pepper, and I think these tasted really good. Yeah, the poblanos are great for cooking. Um, they're not too spicy. No, they're milder than most of the other stuff we're growing, but great for stuffed peppers. And then next up, and this is our last pepper for now, because there's more in a box, as was just pointed out to me. We have the California Wonder, the Carolina Wonder, 
don't know the difference. I guess where it's more prolific. I believe one of them is on the West Coast. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, we also have the Golden California Wonder and the California Wonder that is supposed to be a nice red. Once again, have never gotten these to turn color. I think we had one red one. We did. Okay. Not that it matters. I mean, they're fine. Greens are fine. Yeah, I think we can find a good use for them, whether or not they um, stay green or turn sweet, so. Okay, well, I'm going to call it a Wonder Bell Pepper. Somebody in the comments can tell me what the difference is. All right, do you want to do tomatoes or beans? Oh, I'm just kidding. We have more peppers. All right, so not the last pepper. We have banana peppers, which were delicious. We only got to can, I think, five half pints last year, and we only used a few fresh. I have mixed feelings about the banana peppers because I feel like we just aren't as good at using them. We can give it another try. They did work out really well, but I do think we're better at using some of our other peppers with a little more heat. I agree. They would go good in chili, but we don't really have chili that much. So Especially not during the summer when they're fresh. And then by then we have canned peppers of all kinds. Yeah. I say we skip it this year. I agree. Okay. I learned my lesson about saying last, but for now, possibly the last pepper is the Sugar Rush Peach. I don't really care about this pepper. I think this might be another vanity pepper that we wanted to grow because it's pretty. Um, it may very well taste great, but it just did not work out for us last time. And again, they never turned color. So tell us in the comments why our peppers aren't turning the color they're supposed to. So that's a no for this year. Next up, we have cucumbers. First of all, a free seed, uh, bait alpha, I think is what this is called. This came free from Baker Creek Seeds. I don't know what the criteria is to get free seeds. I think it's like a minimum order or something, but I always get something interesting. Um, and I was especially excited about this one because I love cucumbers, fresh or pickled or how I don't care. They're just really good. So I would like to give these a try so that we have a slicing cucumber. Yeah, definitely. Next up is our variety pack of pickling cucumbers. So we've got Parisian pickling, Chicago pickling, and Boston pickling. And I believe in 2022, we grew, it wasn't Parisian. I remember ordering these because it's all they had. I think it was Chicago. It was Chicago. Okay. And they were really good. They did great. Um, we did have trouble in 20, what year was it? The last, the last year, I think. Uh, 2022. Yeah. So, um, they, they struggled in 2022. They had a lot of um, cabbage worms or something. Yeah, we had some pest issues that kept them from reaching maturity. I don't see any reason why it couldn't be any of these. Do you have a preference, you said? No. Um, why don't we just say pickling cucumbers and we'll decide on the fly. That sounds good to me. If anyone has a super specific preference in the comments, let us know what it is and why. Yeah, I would love to hear what pickling cucumbers you guys like. All right, next up is beans. Very first one is our dragon tongue bean. Okay, I wanna talk about why I love beans so much and why I wanna grow so many of them because this is a really big category. Um, so beans for us pretty much always do well. Yeah, yeah, generally speaking, we get really good returns on, on our beans. Yeah, and so we, well, we ate a lot of them fresh. Yes. Um, so that was great. They were good, like, summer, spring, summer, fall vegetable. But we were also able to can them in 2021. We actually still have one jar left because I, I don't want to eat it because I'm, like, kind of sad that it's one of the last jars <laughs> from our garden. <laughs> if we don't need it <laughs> soon, it's probably not going to stay good forever. True. So um, my goal with the with the bean situation is to be able to can enough to not need to buy any. Like I don't want to buy any frozen beans. I don't want to buy any canned beans. I just want to grow them all and can them or eat them fresh. Okay. So the goal is to grow enough beans to not have to purchase any frozen or fresh, whatever. Um, that's going to mean growing a lot of trellising varieties that we've tried before, as well as some bush beans. These are dragon tongue beans. They are a bush variety. Um, for us, they've been really prolific. Oh, they've been, yeah, they did a super good job uh, when we grew them uh, and they're really tasty. And just for the record, if you've never tried home canned beans, they taste way better just in general, any variety than 
uh, store canned beans. It's no no contest. Um, but these were fantastic and they were super tender after we cooked them up or canned them. So uh, absolutely yes. Okay, definitely yes. Um, also, if you cook them, they don't stay this color. They turn yellow. like a yellowish green. Yeah, the purple pink fades. Yeah, um, they can really well though. Um, I don't think the texture was weird. No, I thought they were great. Okay, cool. So dragon tongues, yes. These were one of my two favorite beans. For those of you wondering off camera what I've been doing, I've been putting our no's, maybes, and yeses into a variety of containers, trying to keep them at least roughly sorted. So I've got just our dragon tongue beans in here and our peppers in here so we can find them more easily. The next up is the red swan bush bean. Same deal, these ones were super prolific too. Yeah, they worked out really well. Um, I also thought these ones were really good. These ones, when cooked or canned, do also fade to green. So it was a little harder to tell them apart to say um, if they tasted any particular way, but they were really good and they were really prolific. Um, and Alex liked them. Alex did like them. He also liked the dragon tongue beans. Oh yeah, I think those were his favorite. Yes. So, red swan meats. Definitely. 1500 year old cave bean. This is one that we have never grown before. Productive and vigorous. Long vines need support, so it's a trellising bean. Oh, soak seeds overnight. We don't we do not do that. We don't soak our beans overnight, and we have never had issues with them sprouting. So uh, we are gonna give these a try. Alex picked these out. This was his one of his beans from last year. Yeah, regardless of, of what we think, this one is one that Alex was very excited about, so we're at least gonna give it a shot. Next up is the Blahilda bean. This is a trellising purple be bean that uh, were very prolific for us in our last garden. Um, we grew pounds of this bean. Yeah, I think this may have been our most prolific bean. Um, and so good. Yeah, so good. Again, fades to green when you cook or can it, but it's very beautiful on the vine. Um, Okay. Next up is the Blue Lake Bush Bean. Um, this is a variety that we haven't tried yet. Reviews say that it's good for canning and is prolific, so hopefully that is true. I think if you asked me like four years ago when we were first starting our garden, if like what my favorite plant was to grow, I never would have said beans. Beans, 100%. It's beans. They're so easy to grow. They're super prolific versatile and they're way less finicky in my opinion than a tomato i ever. i agree i think they're also the biggest it's the biggest difference to me between home canned food and uh and like store-bought canned food mm -hmm. taste wise it's it's a night and day difference i hate store-bought canned beans they taste awful and metallic uh all of these ones have tasted great even out of the can mm -hmm. especially fresh but even out of the can just far and away better definitely agree all right, so speaking of favorite beans, this is one of my favorites um, to eat fresh. This is the Chinese red noodle. Um, these get ridiculously long. They're like 18 inches long. The first time I saw one in our garden, I thought it was a snake. Yeah, the picture is not an exaggeration. They do legitimately get to like one and a half, two feet long. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And they taste so good. The texture is incredible. So definitely growing these again. Um, I do... Hmm. I don't think we need to order any this year, um, but this note here, if you can read it, says overpacked due to low germination of 67%. Um, and these beans are a little older. They should still, of course, be viable, but um, we'll overplant them. I usually do two seeds per uh, hole. We're gonna do three for these just because sometimes they do fail. Of course, it's very frustrating when none of them fail, but. Yeah, not to brag or anything, but this low contamination, or low, low contamination, low germination rate, that was not our experience. Uh, these did very well. Maybe not quite as well as some of the other beans, but we only planted a few and we still got enough for several dishes of just this. Very tender, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I think we had six total plants and they did a bumper crop. They grew and then they went dormant and then they grew again. It was great. Yeah, they were incredible. It was, it was amazing. And if you have little kids, they love them too because they're just so ridiculously long, it's silly. Yeah, facts. All right, these guys are Kentucky Wonders down here by Gurney's and then Old, old Homestead Beans, which I'm 90% sure are the same thing. Functionally um, the same. Yeah, they're basically the same. So they're a pole bean. We're just going to trawl some. They're fine. 
Yeah, they did good. It's a good standby green bean. If you don't want anything that looks fancy, this worked well for us as well. All right, then we have our tenkara soybean. Um, these did well for us. We didn't grow them last year, I don't think. No, we didn't. We grew them the first year and that we had the garden beds. Yeah, and they did really well. Yeah, they did great. Okay. Do you want them? <laughs> You're asking because it's like specifically me. Yeah. Yes, um, okay. I think they'd be good and I'll do a better job of eating them fresh as edamame. Um, yeah, these are a good just edamame soybean. Not going to do anything fancy with them, but I love love eating edamame. So just got to get some good salt to go with them. All right, then related, we have the sugar daddy pea. I don't know why I bought so many of these. Because um, Alex liked them. Alex loved eating the peas. Oh, yeah, he did. Well, no, is this the one he liked? Is this the one we grew before? We only grew one variety of pea. Is this it? No. This was a new one we were going to try, and then we missed the season. Oh. Okay, sugar daddy peas. Well... Do we have a different variety of pea? Do we have whatever the previous one was? I don't think Alex is going to be able to tell the difference. I don't think he'll be able to, but I feel like maybe it was a Tom Thumb. We'll come across it. Okay. I think. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I think we should grow a variety of pea. Okay. Well, yeah, definitely at least one variety. So next up is a free seed. This is Merlot lettuce. This was really popular with some of the YouTubers that I watch um, last growing season. Um... I think it was Rachel and Todd at 1870s, what was it, that 1870s homestead. They, I'm pretty sure they canned it. I might be misremembering that, but I think they did. Anyway, um, eh. I think that as far as lettuces go, we should stick with things that we know that we'll eat. Mm -hmm. I agree completely. We've had trouble with lettuce in the past, so I want to do something that's not finicky. Another free seed. I love this from Baker Creek. I hope they never stop doing it. Um, this is a bok choy. I'm 90% sure we have a bok choy growing right now in the green stocks. I think we do. I would love to. The, the green stocks are doing okay. It's weird that they're growing in this season. Um, I would love to do a bok choy because I wanted to use it in stir fries, but it's getting expensive where we are. I'm not particularly picky about what kind of bok choy. I'm also not picky about it. Um, I agree that it would be great to be able to do them. The reason the green stocks are doing well right now is because they went through the cold season. So oh. the seeds finally had time to germinate. Um, so. Fair enough. Yeah, I planted them way too late. I planted them in March. Mm. So I think they should have gone out honestly in January. Yeah, March is pretty toasty here. Oh, I should replant. If we're gonna... no. anyway. A note for later. Yes, a note for later. Okay, and then we have the Calibos. Calibos, I don't know, cabbage. Um, this is a nice purple cabbage. I love purple cabbage. I think it tastes really good. Um, I think that this is also growing. I'm pretty sure that's the one we have the little baby cabbage of. Mm. So I don't know what else it would be. I can't think of anything either with that color leaves. Okay. So, um, meh? I... I think I might prefer to grow a more standard purple cabbage and then maybe a Napa. I agree. Okay, so we'll go with no for this year until we really learn how to do cabbages because right now I feel like we're just wasting seeds. All right, so we've got our sweet basil seeds. I really want to throw a seed of basil in with our tomatoes when we start them. So like in a seed tray, I want to do a tomato and a basil and just see how they do. Um, those are good companion plants. They are supposed to do great together. I've never gotten basil to grow from seed though, so I don't know if it's because it's too hot here or we're just not in the right zone for it, but I'm gonna give it a try. Um, I did grow basil this year by transplanting out a store-bought basil plant. Um, we harvested about $40 worth of basil off of a $5 plant because it just kept growing um, as we were taking care of it and harvesting the leaves sustainably. So that was a great, uh, great hack that worked out really well for us. We'll give this a try this year. Next up is lemon balm. This is a wonderful plant that I want to try because it has citronella in it. Um, it is great at keeping bugs away from things. So I would love to put this pretty much everywhere in the garden. Um, we do have, you know, our house backs up to the woods. So we have a lot more bugs and pest pressure than we did at our old property. Um, so I definitely want to get this going. 
Next up is the nasturtium. The nasturtium is supposed to also be great for keeping pests at bay. Uh, I don't really know that that's necessarily been my experience. Um, I did get them to grow fairly well um, this past year. However, uh, they are pretty finicky in my experience. So I think I would like to stick with the lemon balm. We are gonna mark it down as a maybe and I definitely need to buy some seeds. All right, next is the dishcloth or the loofah gourd. This is a yes for sure. I really like the idea of growing a loofah gourd just to see if I can do it, honestly. Um, but it's a sustainable way to essentially make your own sponge, your own dish, dishcloth, really. Um, I've never grown one before. I think that they're really cool. Next up is a Bush Sugar Baby Watermelon. This is going to be yet another yes for us. The uh, watermelon is something that Phil and I both like quite a lot. Uh, and Judah seems to like as well. Alex, not so much, but these are very prolific. And I think that he might like them when they're freshly harvested, a little sweeter. Um, and if not, that's okay. The rest of the family can eat them. I think these will do pretty well. And then we've got the New England Sugar Pie Squash, the Sugar Pie Pumpkin. Um, definitely growing this because I want to have canned pumpkin available in our pantry. This is a very manageable size of pumpkin, which is very important to us. I've seen a lot of the, you know, huge varieties of pumpkin. Um, that just doesn't feel like something that we can deal with processing or breaking down right now. So we want to stick with these smaller varieties. Next up is the ground cherry. I don't want to grow these this year. I don't want to try them. It's just too much heartbreak. These never work out for us. It was a nice thought, but as far as getting fruit, we have the space to try fruit trees. So we should just get those in the ground and berry bushes. Agree. Yes. All right. Next up is okra. And we actually have another variety in a packet. Yeah. Okinawa pink. I can yeah. Over here. Okay. So my thoughts on okra are we're never growing heavy hitter okra again. <laughs> um, it was way too prolific. Go figure. For us. Yeah. For us, it was too prolific. Um, and it, it just wasn't as good. I think the flavor was kind of bland. So I'd rather grow one of these. Now these didn't do as well, but they got shaded out. I love the Alabama Reds. I think the Alabama Reds were the right mix of prolific and good tasting. Um, we were originally Northerners, so okra is a bit new to us. I had never had it before we grew it, um, but I'm getting more comfortable with some different ways to try and cook it. I think we could add it to some gumbo or some red beans and rice and have have it be pretty successful in there. Okay, so yes, salad memorads pass on the Okinawa pink. Yeah, we'll pass on the Okinawa pinks. They're pretty, but... Facts, facts. Now, the next one that we have um, was harvested from some dill plants that a very sweet lady at an estate sale gave me. They dug up the dill plants for me and I transplanted them into our garden. They went to seed almost immediately, um, but they we were able to, to harvest them so we're going to go ahead and plant out the dill and this is a definite yes to me um i want it everywhere in the garden because i want to use it for canning and i'm so tired of having to buy dill so we need to get these uh harvested correctly put in an envelope and then be good to go yep and next up <laughs> this is a goldenrod seed that i acquired from a parking lot. It was public property. We've become ungovernable. Just a reminder, if you do harvest seeds from a public space where, where you are allowed to do so, do it sustainably. Um, don't over harvest because the plants won't grow back the following year. Goldenrod is a perennial, so I'm not concerned about it. We had thousands and thousands of plants yeah. available from where we pulled this from. This and is a fraction of a percent of what was available. Yeah, we took a very, very tiny amount, really just what we need. So we do need to get the seeds out of here. They did go through a frost. Goldenrod is very hardy, so I think it's going to be okay. It should be fine. I think it'll be fine. If they grow, they grow. If they don't, they don't. I just am having trouble finding goldenrod seeds online. That does it for the box, other than the <laughs> tomatoes that were in there. What? Just the miscellaneous wood screws. Yeah, this was also our junk box upstairs. So 
it's fine. Don't worry about it. All right, we are moving on to the photo boxes. Um, as y'all may know, this is my favorite way to store seeds because you can keep them really well organized, uh, which we of course have not done a great job of this year, but you can if you stay on top of it. Um, this is what they look like full. I've secretly been doing it off camera this whole time. Feels the best. All right, if you would like to give storing your seeds like this a try in the coming year, you can pick up boxes like this at Michael's um, or similar craft stores. We also have a link down below in the description where you can support our channel if you'd like to buy through our Amazon link. So first up is Yarrow. I would like to give this a try. And I did end up buying these instead of um, acquiring them. I'm gonna say maybe though, I don't want to waste the seeds. Sure. Okay. This is common yarrow, you can tell by the white text. <laughs> Next is marigold. Uh, this is French double dwarf. I guess I don't know what that means. Uh, there are different marigolds apparently. Um, we always buy our marigolds started. Are we doing that again? Do we want to grow them from seed? When do we have to start them? Why don't we try and grow them from seed? Okay, we're in... We did have good good luck with the uh, the marigolds that we bought started spreading pretty well. Um, of they course, did. they lasted until the first frost, but yeah. um, they did fairly well. Why don't we plan to start them with tomatoes? Sounds good. Oh, well, not like in the same. Well, I guess they could go in the same. Yeah. I'll do it. Some with basil, some with marigold. Okay, here you go. And we also have some varieties of sunflower. This is the Autumn Beauty Mixed Colors and Chianti Hybrid. Uh, no sunflowers. All right, next is Borage. We did have these, um, I don't remember when we planned to, 2021, I think. They, did, they didn't do great, honestly, but we also didn't start them early. We direct sowed them. Yeah. Um, They're another pest preventative flower, but I think this year we could honestly just stick with Lemon Balm and Marigold. Yeah, why don't we stick with the Lemon Balm and Marigold? We can give these a try another year. Okay. Then we've got just a ton of flowers. So we've got the Bachelor's Button, a uh, classic romantic mix, so it's very Valentine's y. Um, Alex picked these out. My vote is that we skip them this year, though. Yeah, I think we give him a selection of a curated selection. He can pick uh, his favorites from those. Okay. So, um, so we'll vote out the bachelor's. We'll vote out the bachelor's ones. Um, Zinnia was another free seed. Um, this is a canary bird. I think they're very cute. Snapdragons, um, morning glory. Oh, I break these all down. Um, he loved the cosmos. Why don't you just write, I don't know. Well, if you want to do a true inventory, I suppose you should yeah. write them all down. Zinnia's a no. Okay, snapdragons are a maybe? Yeah, I think snapdragons can be in the in the mix. Okay, and these are the false ones, yeah. Um, okay, morning glories. Eh. Um, Cosmos, in my opinion, should be a yes, um, because Alex loved them. Yeah, and is it that... is the same colors as the other ones he picked, so. Yeah, yep. Okay, um, so sorry, maybe. Um, poppies, I would love to grow poppies to harvest the seeds for baking. Um, I've never successfully grown a poppy though. I'm not good at growing flowers. Do we want, is this a variety that might be difficult to grow? Do we want to look into getting? Yeah, definitely. Something a little easier. Okay, so let's do maybe and we'll do a buy symbol. Okay. Ooh, terrible dollar sign. Okay, um, pansies. <sighs> For my gothic garden. Okay. Um, meh. Yeah, I think we've got several flowers, and I'd like to focus more on either the flowers that um, do something to help the garden, or the ones that Alex picks because he is very interested in growing them. So I agree. Okay. There's flowers. All right. Next up, we have radishes. I think these are all radishes. Um. Okay, so we have a few different varieties here. I guess we have those two. Um, we grew these two years ago, and then the following year, the bed was infested with something. 
Yeah. That they, was like eating them. Like, everything in that bed failed until we like really turned it over. Yeah. Well, we turned it over and then we planted garlic. Yes. Okay. Which and did. That, and that worked well. Yeah. I want to do that pretty much every winter. Um, I love these varieties. These were so great when they worked. I agree. I did like the Japanese wasabi, but they were much harder to grow. Um, can we put them in the maybe? Yes. Um, I would like to focus on these kind of more uh, classic varieties because uh, they did they were they were extremely easy, yes. and we can just do a better job maybe pickling them to make them quick pickled radishes. That's how we ate yeah, a lot of them. They, they worked were out well. So good. We did those in best four apps. They were delicious. So then the last variety we have, well, okay, these are very similar, so just together. Um, but the last variety is our French breakfast. I want so badly for these to work, but they just don't grow. So. Yeah, these these definitely worked a lot better than the French breakfast for whatever reason. So no on those for this year. All right, next box, let's see what we have in here. First up is um, another okra. This is Alabama red okra question mark. It's possibly cross pollinated with heavy hitter. So uh, if we grow this, I kind of just want to like chuck it in the back of the property. All right, so we have Agastache. Um, these actually did grow this year for us. Uh, I really like it. There's, it's supposed to make a really good tea. Um, but again, I just, I don't want to like grow them and have them go to waste. They immediately died when we got the first frost this year. Oh. So I think, again, I think I didn't get them planted early enough. So I think I think it's a skip. Okay, we can skip these for now. Again, we're still getting used to the growing seasons down here. We were very much used to having a very, very long frozen season. Which would be great for garlic and onions and stuff, but it's just not. The idea of planting something in January or February just sounds insane coming from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Agree. And Iowa. Um, all right. Next is Calendula, the Pacific Beauty Mix. I would really like to try growing this. Sure. Um, there is a witch folktale, I guess, that uh, I read to Alex, <laughs> that if you walk barefoot over a bed of Calendula, its magic lets you hear the plants talk. And every so often, I don't know, it's just like buried in his brain, but every so often I'll say, can we hear the plants talk yet? That's pretty adorable. So I guess we have to- We gotta say yes. Plant these. So next is chamomile. Um, that is an empty seed packet. Um, I kept to remind myself to buy more. Um, I want that for tea. So. Okay. Yes. Immediate yes. Tomato, tomato. Okay, here's more lemon balm, a different variety. That's limoncello. Um, so that can go with wherever you put them. This is milkweed, red or swamp milkweed. It's very pretty and it's great for pollinators. However, um, milkweed sap is poisonous if ingested in large quantities. And if you get it on your skin, it can cause dermatitis and sensitive individuals. I don't want to grow this with the kids. Yeah. All right, here is Mullion. This is a biennial. Um, I did some herb based shopping, um, last year. We can skip this this year. I use it in spell work. Okay. Poor hound, same deal. Um, not something I really want to mess with this season. Fever few, honestly, both of these. Fever few and St. John's were are both, um, herbal, herbals that I'd like to try. Um, just not this year. And then the last one on that bag is cumin. I want to grow that. I want to see if we can grow enough to make our own cumin. Um, it's worth a shot. Uh, okay. We do use a lot of cumin. We are changing our mind on the Serrano Tampicano. Uh, there's another variety that we're going to try instead. Yes. Sorry. And that variety is whatever this is. It just says Serrano Chili Pimento. It looks like they're going to be bigger. Because those ones are tiny. They're teeny tiny. They're such a pain in the butt to process. All right. Next, we've got a plain old jalapeno. Uh, love jalapenos. Yes. Uh, jalapenos are our most used pepper. Oh, 100%. Well, yeah, I mean that one. And then the lemon drop, we put that in everything. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is another of those 
in my opinion, Vanity Bell Peppers, the King of the North. Um, honestly, I don't really care about that pepper. Why don't we just stick with the Carolina and California wonders? Agree. Okay, got another poblano. Um, we're growing poblanos, so those can go with the previous ones. Um, a different variety of jalapeno. Jaloro. Yaloro. Hello? 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 How, how do you say that? Haloro? I mean, I guess it depends on where they're from. Let's see if we get some more information. It says, it's, oh no, I thought that said Chinese. It says Chinense. You see this? Chinense? I'm not smart enough for this. I don't know what that means. Okay. Well, anyway, we'll grow them if we run out of the other jalapeno seeds. I don't know what this is. This is one that you picked out. It's called a Balak pepper. Yeah, I wanted to try that in some um, curries and stuff, but I think in the interest of sticking with not vanity growing, um, I think we put that one in the maybe pile at best. Okay. And possibly just in the no pile outright. Okay. Uh, this is more Serrano's. These look like they're small again. Um, so these ones no, but I can't tell the difference, honestly. So then next we've got the Ahi Chinchi Amarillo Pepper. I don't know what this is. That was another one I wanted to grow. Uh, let's put that in the... Why don't we put that one in the no? Okay. And then I'm going to say yes to this one. This is the Sweet Pepper. Um, this is a Chinese giant variety. Um, there's enough seeds in there. What are we saying to this one? Yes. Yes. So this made me realize that we're actually going through our no thank you pile of seeds. So you can take a look at this video to learn more about uh, that. Uh, basically in our previous seed inventory that we did, I went through and sorted out seeds that we either didn't want to grow again or seeds that we wanted to wait on. Um, and I do have a plan for what we're going to do with these seeds and other things that end up in the no thank you pile. Um, which you'll get to see eventually when I finally get to it. Uh, anyway, the reason that made me think of this is because we had so much luck growing parsnips, uh, but we don't like parsnips, apparently. Yeah, it turns out, it turns out we don't like parsnips. All right, the last box, starting with this godforsaken tomato. All right, this is literally trash. Um, I hate this tomato. So these tomatoes infested our garden. They were very successful in the most negative way possible. They're tiny, the skin is super thick, they don't taste all that good. They're too small to use in most kinds of cooking and they'd just be a pain in the butt for any kind of processing that you'd need to remove the skins for. And they don't ripen on the vine at the same time. So you would like have to pick them one by one. Yeah, you can even see it here that these ones, and this is not even as bad as it was for us. Yeah. For us, some of these would not even have formed and these ones would be bright red. Yeah, it, they were awful. I never want to grow those tomatoes again. The, those are going to the library as far as I'm concerned. Why would we do something so mean to the seed library? Because I don't want them to go to waste. I'm gonna put a warning inside there, like turn back now. It's gonna be like Jumanji. They're gonna open it up and they're gonna be like, why did we get like return this? <laughs> I don't think like, you can return seats to the library. What? It's Just not a book. Put them back the next year. <laughs> put them in a different envelope. If oh you see God. these at the seed library, know what you're getting yourself into. Good luck and Godspeed. All right, next up is carrots. This is the cosmic purple variety. Um, no. They didn't grow for us. No, they did. Um, but they, uh, they were like weirdly hairy. Oh yeah, we did get a few of these and they, they had so many root hairs coming off of them. It was, I mean, frankly, it was a little off-putting, but also it seemed like a pain in the butt just to harvest them. Well, I thought something was wrong with them. Yeah. So I, I don't really want to deal with that this year. Okay, next up is Kyoto Red. These, in my opinion, were a little finicky, but I think they were really good. Sure, we can do yes on that. Do we have a regular, like, classic carrot? Yes. So we also have the hybrid sugar snacks, right? Yep, sugar snacks, which I just like the name, so. Fair, well, they're for us. Our kids don't like carrots, so. Very bizarre. 
in any way. Okay, if you have a recipe for carrots that makes the kids like the carrots, please put it in the comments. All right, and then this is our... Rainbow carrots. Yeah, our go-to carrots. So these did really well for us. Um, we actually harvested, and I think we still have, um, all of the carrot top greens. And then we turn it into pesto, which is delicious. Oh yeah, I think we got one more can of that. It's really good. Yeah, okay, what do they call them? Rainbow eggs, okay. Especially with a lot of pepper. We got the beets, we got the beets, we've got the beets. We have the beets that spilled. Um, we also have golden beets. So my vote on all beets this year is no, which is a shame because I really want beet chips, but I'm so tired of trying to grow beets. Yeah, why don't we put that at another year? We can try for beets. Okay, so we've got Detroit Dark Reds, the classic. And then we've also got Golden Beets. Um, I love beet chips so, so much. They're so good. And we also make this really good salad too. That's like roasted beets with arugula, honey mustard, goat cheese, and green apples. Green apples yeah. um, and I would like to be able to make that more. Oh, and sweets and beets. Oh yeah, and sweets and beets. I haven't made this in a long time. That's sweet potatoes and beets, pan roasted. Okay, we're gonna do more cooking with beets, but skip growing them for now. For now. Okay. This is what we grew that Alex really liked. This is the tall telephone pea. The packet was open. Okay. Um, I say yes. Sure. Okay. So these are another trellising, uh, I believe tall trellising uh, pea. Yeah, large, large, long vines, large pods. So definitely trellis. Nice. All right, then we've got the sugar snap pea. Also yes, I think. Also yes, okay. Are well, trellis one? you know, it doesn't say. Oh, wait, hold on. Trellis vining types for best results. I, I think that means this is a vining type okay. and to trellis it for best results. Okay. I think someone copy pasted that without a whole lot of editing maybe. No shade, Baker Creek. You guys make a lot of seeds. Thanks. All right. Next is the Tom Thumb Pea. This is a good container variety. Um, I could go either way on this. When we say maybe, and if we do it, it might be best to put that in the um, green stocks. All right. These are huckleberries. We're going to say no on this one this year. We got these because we wanted to get more fruit into our garden. Um, the berries, uh, when they're not ripe, can be poisonous. So I just don't want to mess with that with the, with the kids right now. Yeah, um, we do have plans to do some some uh, other berry bushes like strawberry, blackberry, raspberry, and blueberry. Yeah, yeah, lots um, of blueberries. All right, as sad as it makes me, I think we need to say no to asparagus. It's a shame because asparagus takes a couple of years to get going. Yeah. Um, but I do I think I agree, unfortunately. I think we need to research more about it too because I was reading up on the like different varieties that there are and there's like differences in prolificness between male and female plants or something. I don't really understand it. I just, I need to research it more. All right, next is amaranth. Um, this one, I, well, first of all, I find it really interesting that they're like wildly different plants, but anyway, um, these ones you can eat the stock and I just think they look so freaking cool. Um, but these ones grew so well for us. Oh yeah. And then we didn't end up doing anything with it. But if we harvested the grain, basically, we can cook with it. So if we grow one, my vote is this one. Oh, for real? We can just eat it? Yeah. They're also just really pretty. Like it's a super pretty plant. So then we've got white buckwheat. Um, this is a cover crop. You cut it down before it goes, I think before it goes flowering. Um, I need to do a little more research on it, but I'm gonna say yes, just as like a way to cover. The garden. Sure. Uh, okay. When do we plant that? Then? I think the end of the season. Warm season cover crop. Plant anytime in warm weather. Incorporate into soil and flower begins. Okay, so when it starts to flower, you just till it over, I guess. Game. All right. This is Wapsi Valley corn. Um, this was a gift from Miss Jennifer. Thank you again, Jennifer, for this corn. I very badly want to get corn in the garden. Yeah, me too. Okay. So I would like to do this because i don't i'm not sure how well this is going to grow um i want to do this and in another variety um what are your thoughts is this a sweet or dent variety do you know 
I believe it's a sweet corn. Okay, then yes. I don't think we're quite ready to be messing around with a dead corn. I agree. Okay, so that and we'll buy a sweet corn. Another sweet corn, yeah. I would eventually love to grow popcorn as well. Oh, yes. Um, but let's corn. let's start with one kind of corn and see how we do. Great. Especially because I've heard, and I would have to look this up, but I've heard that you have to plant different varieties of corn pretty distant apart because they are wind pollinated to keep from cross pollinating. Okay. Next up is just a regular broccoli from Gurney's. Realizing the front of the seed packet doesn't actually tell you anything. All right, broccoli. Um, this is another, it's in the green stock, but I don't think it's doing well. I but We planted it late again, so. So broccoli is related to cabbages as our Brussels sprouts. I'd love to get them planted at some point, but I don't think this is the year for us to mess with it. I agree. Um, so I think eventually broccoli and Brussels sprouts are coming for you and your weird alien like bulb <laughs> on the stock way of growing, but I don't think this is the year for those. All right, so next we have arugula and spinach. I want to do greens, but we need to do a spring and a fall. And then the reason that it really struggled is because we had it in like the heat of Didn't summer. Did it bolt super hard? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to do it way earlier and way later. Yeah. You've noticed a trend. Yeah, we are. Well, that happened with the tomatoes too. They went, I thought they were dead this year. They went completely dormant because it was like 90 degrees plus for multiple days on end yeah so anyway arugula yes spinach yes um but maybe like a little shaded sure okay all right next we've got two varieties of cauliflower i wanted so badly for this to work i love cauliflower so much i mean it says right there it's amazing it should be pretty good i don't know how much you like cauliflower um i think if we're gonna try anything from that like uh cabbage adjacent Kind, it should be cauliflower. Um, so I say maybe to one of these or, or a cauliflower. Okay, I say yes to the, or maybe to the amazings and no to the purple of Sicily. Okay, we don't have a ton of these, but it's still like at least 20 seeds. Okay. Well, that would only be like 10 heads of cauliflower. Do you want to get another? Okay, so apparently we went a little bonkers on the cabbage, so um, I think these might all be no's, but we've got early flat Dutch cabbage, Emico hybrid, Omero hybrid, and then white stemmed pak choy mustard greens. Um, I believe we said yes to bok choy, let's double check. We did say yes to the, the, the like teeny tiny bok choys, but I think this is one that we specifically picked for our like area. Okay, so yes. So I'd like to do yes to this one with the uh, bok choy with mustard greens style. And uh, I guess we can do no to the rest of these. Although I'd like to look up what these actually look like. Um, okay, we can do maybes. What do I have here? So this is a red cabbage. Okay. Purple burgundy head, small in size. So these are like mini red cabbages. So I. I think that might be a yes. Okay. Let me look at what these other were. Heads are large, six to 10 pounds and flat, which makes them easier to cut for processing. So they'd be like this shape, I think. And then... It says perfect for making sauerkraut. Did we maybe get these as a replacement for Napa's to make? I'd prefer to get yeah. Napa's. Yeah, we did, because we couldn't find Napa seeds. Okay, let's get let's get Napa's instead, instead of these, unless we can't find them. If we can't find them, I'll put these in the maybe pile, maybe. Okay. And then this one, Emico Hybrid, Harvest One Heads Reach, Desired Size, Unhelpful. Large heads, 10 inches tall, Chinese cabbage has a dark green wrapper leaves that protect densely packed light green leaves. This also sounds like a bok choy, the Emico, so why don't we stick with the the white stemmed pak choy for now, and we'll leave the Emico hybrid in the something. In the no. No. Okay, so no to the Emicos. Do maybe to the early flats, early flat Dutch. And yes to white stemmed pak choy and Amaro. Yeah, Amaro is, so Amaro's are purple, our red cabbage, and this is a bok choy, which I'd like to try, because I also do want to try making kimchi. 
Oh yeah. I yeah. I really want to get into more fermentation this year. I'll yeah. Restart and my sourdough. Napa cabbage and bok choy is what people say you use for kimchi. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Next we've got. Um, two different varieties of lavender, uh, Munster strain and lavender. Um, I really want to get this to work. I so badly want lavender to grow uh, on our property. Okay, we'll give it a try. Okay, um, so I'm gonna say yes to just one variety at a time though. So yes to lavender, plain lavender. The like basic stuff is this one, well, okay, this one outright claims the Munstead strain says it's a more reliable strain of an old-fashioned favorite. Mm -hmm. It also says, though, it's northern hardy, so I don't know if that'll do as well here. They both say to start indoors in late winter, which I think may be where we messed up. Moist paper towel holding it for 30 to 40 days. Okay. So we may need to get on that. So, all right. <laughs> Stay tuned for lavender. a video about lavender. For lavender, we're starting it soon. <laughs> Okay, so do you want to do Munstead instead then? I have, I don't care. Uh, um, well, I'm almost tempted to say let's just start both. Okay. And see what ta and see if one of them takes off. All right. Next is the basic green bunching onion. I don't know why, but I've always had trouble getting these to grow. But my grandma always had just like swaths of them. I'd like to try them again. I know yeah. that we've had trouble with them, but green onions are. I mean, A, they're extremely expensive for what they are. And once you get them going, because we did get some, we, we yeah. had some, and we, we, I mean, we probably got like a bunch's worth out of just the few that we got. So I would love to try these again and hopefully get a ton. Agree. Green onions are delicious. Well, apparently you can freeze them according to You Suck, you suck at, at Cooking. cooking. Yeah. yeah. So. Shout out to You Suck at Cooking. Okay, we are almost to tomatoes. I think this is our, oh, I'm just kidding. Oh my God. Why do I ever say anything? Okay. <laughs> so tomatillos. This would be a very bland channel. You never said anything. <laughs> tomatillos are a pass. Yeah, tomatillos are a pass. Hard pass. We had one attempt to grow this year, and I I looked multiple times throughout the season, and it was just an empty husk. So I want tomatillos to grow, even more than ground cherries, which they are like similar to in construction because I do love a good tomatillo salsa. Me too. Um, I think that needs to be something where we kind of have our other stuff uh, more well understood because I think it's gonna require a little bit more attention from us to figure out. Okay. Um, um, so we've got a summer squash. This is a cash machine hybrid. Um, this is the plant Miss Juana grew, our neighbor at our old house. And she said that she never had any problems with vine borers. I'm 90% sure that they just ended up at our house. Yeah, um, but, our decoy crops. <laughs> but she had so much luck with them. Um, I want to give them a try for sure. Are these a yellow or a zucchini? They're green. Zucchini, okay. Well, zucchini, they're, they taste very similar. They do. But um, I would love to do that. I love good zucchini or yellow squash. Spaghetti squash. I really want this to work too. I love spaghetti squash noodles yeah i um i agree i will say i don't think that spaghetti squash replaces spaghetti um oh, 100%. but it is uh it is a good vegetable um and i would like to start growing more winter squash just because it is calorie dense and extremely hearty it should save well so i would like to try these as well well good news next up is the winter squash um these Butternut. Yes, these are a butternut. Um, so the very, very first year that we gardened at our old property was 2020. Um, and these were so aggressive. I think we got like 20 off of one plant, like one vine. Um, and they were huge. And we ate them for months. Um, I would like to do them. I almost feel like this is something we should do outside of and separate from the beds and just yes. kind of let them do their own thing out there. I agree. And then if we find them and they're overripe, we can just give them to chickens or something. Yeah. Funny story about these. We also had a, a, a secret cucumber vine oh, go alongside them and the cucumber got so big that we thought it was a butternut squash. <laughs> uh, it wasn't. It was not 
good. <laughs> I canned it anyway. It was the most mushy pickle. I threw out that jar it was of pickles. Disgusting. It was so bad. It was like this. It was, it was this big. It I have was, a picture of it. It was somewhere. enormous. Oh, that was, was so terrible. It was like a mutant. <laughs> All right, the thing everybody has been waiting for, right? There's no more, okay. Um, I, okay, it's time, it's time. Okay. Should we just lay all the tomatoes out? Should we no. get your tier list board out again? I wanna do another tier list of the peppers. Um, you can check out my quote, definitive 2023 tomato tier list. There was a lot of drama on Spoilers, that. Spoilers, the spoon tomatoes are still garbage. <laughs> First um, I had some guy, I think I deleted the comment, but I had some guy say, oh, you're not growing San Marzano's. Are you even a gardener? So for the record on the San Marzano thing, just to like oh. <laughs> inflame people a little bit, uh, in order to call them San Marzano's, I'm pretty sure they have to be grown in a specific region, which I don't know if that's pretension or a soil quality or something like that, but, uh, we don't live there, so it doesn't matter <laughs> if we grow them. We're just going to grow Roma's. Because we're not that fancy or worried about it. It's gonna be fine. Agree. I'll add some extra oregano or something and it'll it'll work out. Next up is the Queen of the Night. Um, and also I we have so many varieties that I'm just gonna it's the tomato page. Yeah. Tomato seeds. Okay. So Queen of the Night. Um, I follow Baker Creek on Instagram and I don't remember when it was, but earlier this year they did a like appreciation giveaway basically where they gave away free seeds. And of course I ended up buying other seeds at the same time. But anyway, these were free. Um, I think they're pretty, um, but I don't know what they taste like. And I guess I would rather devote our garden space to something we know we need. I agree. These okay. do possibly have the, uh one of the coolest names for any tomato, but tomatoes have, tomatoes have been very hit or miss for us. And I'd rather, at least for this year, stick to kind of our fundamental tomatoes. If we're gonna do a, like a fancy or vanity tomato, I think we should pick one to give a try. I don't know that this is it. So I'm gonna say no as well. I agree. Okay. Uh, this literal trash, get that out of my sight, please for um, while we're talking about what kind of tomatoes we want. There's essentially three kinds that I'm thinking of, and that is a, a big slicing tomato, mm -hmm. um, something along the lines of a beef steak for on burgers or sandwiches. Hey, there we go. Okay. Um, a small tomato, like a cherry or grape tomato. Um, we use those a lot for salads, a few different kinds of pasta that we make. Um, yeah, there we go, something like that. Uh, and then a uh, aroma or Amish paste, something in that, that like oval category that's good for making sauces. Um, perfect. All right. So oh, wait. hold on. Good Lord. Uh, we do need to, so I, <laughs> that's it. Are you sure? Should we start turning over some it. of these boxes? <laughs> So I would like to have at least one from each of these. I guess that this is our current uh, current winner for Are there... beef steak. Uh oh, hold on. Remember like five seconds ago when you said, guess we'd never need to buy tomato oh seeds again. Why do I say anything? Okay, well, this is empty. So we need a beef steak tomato or none of these. Let's see. No, not those are all on face or varieties similar. Okay. Well, um, down to grow these Romas and what is Roma VF? Very fancy. I don't actually know what that means. Okay. Well, and yeah, these are all. Is the back side? Little guys. Okay, so I guess we do need to buy a beef steak tomato of some kind. Um, we had one that was working out well in 2022. I think it was this one. Um, was it? Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, we tried the mortgage lifter and it didn't work out as well as our cherry tomatoes did. But if I remember right, I think Jennifer said mortgage lifter did well for her, but I can't remember. Okay, so we'll see. We'll have to do some research and pick out exactly what we want to do. Um, I'm also down to try, you know, starting both and seeing what starts best. Okay, my vote for tomatoes is 
unless we already have it, not buying an heirloom variety because they are so finicky. Okay, I'm down for just a basic super steak. Whatever the heck. Yeah. Hybrid. Okay. Okay, got it. So then we've got our our eating tomatoes, basically. So we've got uh, Fourth of July hybrid. I believe this is actually what grew. This it did year. a good job, yeah. It did, and it was really good. Mm -hmm. um, Brad's Atomic Grape. <sighs> okay, if anybody like goes back and watches my previous videos about these, I definitely said that I want to grow this every year, but I don't know if I want to. I think these are another aspirational kind of like a vanity tomato. a vanity tomato. It'd be delightful. We use m more so than these than like Roma style or paste tomatoes or beefsteak tomatoes. We definitely use these the most. And these and, ones look so great. And these meaning this variety. Yeah, I'm like sorry. This kind. Uh, cherry or grape tomatoes. Um, but they just haven't, they haven't worked out for us very well. So the, okay. I think part of the problem is that in 2022, we had so much rain and I was super pregnant. So I wasn't in the garden very much. Yeah, it was hard to get out there and harvest things. And we had to just trim stuff back because yeah. once the tomatoes took off after the heat of summer started to dissipate, mm -hmm. um, it just got way too overgrown in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so they grew, but they were so waterlogged that they were like split. Yeah, and that, that's even with them saying, like, these ones are specifically supposed to be crack resistant. Ugh. Okay, I, th I think a no. I think a no for this year. Okay. Let's nail down our tomato growing and come back to it, because tomato splitting has been a problem for us. Yeah, we need to make sure our beds drain really well here. Um, okay, so we've got some other options here. Again, we're pretty sure the 4th of July is what uh, did grow in our test bed this year. Um, which I'd wanted to do a video on, but I ended up not doing one because of reasons. So, um, the reason being the big sad. Okay, so large red cherry. Um, I think we could do these or these. I, mm, they're so good though. Okay. I think all these go together for black cherries. Mm -hmm. So Alex really wants a yellow tomato. He wants a yellow tomato? At least he did the last time we talked about it, but I don't only want yellow tomatoes. Well, these are, the of all the tomatoes that we, like, of all the varieties, cherry and grape tomatoes, the ones that we eat the most by leaps and yeah. bounds, especially when we're having, like, the lemon tomato pasta. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd be down for growing several varieties okay. and seeing which one takes off. And if they all take off, great. great. And we can, we can process them into salsa if we need to. Mm-hmm. So I'm down for all three of these, and if one of them fails, then we have a, a fail safe. I'd say along with beans, these are our... So thinking about the bed setup, it's just, it's going to be the same as we talked about doing last year. So it'll be a four by eight, right? A four by eight bed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we can fit eight plants, eight tomato plants per bed week I don't know how many beds we're gonna get built we haven't talked about that yet but we could plan to do like four 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 sure or we could do like four 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 because we don't use a lot of slicing tomatoes that's fair I think yeah these ones definitely the least and okay. if we have more of these I'll be able to make more of our like sauces and use them for chilies and stuff like that and they're getting used for canning and for canning yeah I, we, I want multiple beds of this tomato I can't believe I'm saying that either um, well, I, I was actually going to say that I think if, if we're being honest with ourselves, roughly half of our garden should be tomatoes and beans. 100%. And then the other half should be the rest because we, we will absolutely eat the beans and peas and, and, uh, and that stuff. And we will 100% go through or be able to preserve the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. It's, um, and then pet the next biggest one should probably be peppers mm -hmm. because there are so many ways to preserve them and because they aid in the ways that we make a lot of our tomato stuff. I agree. Okay, so Alex is getting a lot of seats this year. We're, we're giving him a lot of choices this year already. Do we want to maybe phase out the yellow tomatoes? Is that the... Maybe, yeah. Okay. Is, is that okay? 
I think so. Why don't we plan to ask him if he if there's one more kind of seed that he wants that we haven't already kind of allocated, okay. like the flowers and things like that. And if he picks the yellow tomatoes, fine. If he picks something else, fine. Um, okay. So we'll say maybe. We'll, we'll say a maybe to that because it might be what he picks. If he picks something else, he picks something else. Okay. That boy does love tomatoes. God, so. I eat so many tomatoes. So does Judah. Yeah. They are my boys. Okay. Um, so then 4th of July hybrid, I say yes. I say yes. Okay. Yes. And then maybe. But I'm, I'm honestly a little tired of pouring our energy into the heirloom stuff that winds up just being tricky or not quite right for our zone or whatever. I agree completely. We'll nail down our basics before we start. Agree, agree. Okay, so then Black Cherry and Everglades are a no. I would say a no for this year. Okay, so then to confirm really quick. So we'll do two beds total with four plants of this four, four question mark, and then maybe it'll just end up being like six, six. You, honestly, even four of these might be, might be too much. more generous than we need to go. We might just do two and then have the that rest of that be. be a okay. different one. Cause we really only use slicing tomatoes for burgers, burgers. and sandwiches, like yeah. BLTs and stuff. And even then like our whole family can get by on one, like tomato for each of those meals. Yeah. Okay, so we do need to buy 4th of July hybrids. We only have a few. Okay, so then these are yeses. Yes. And this is a maybe. Okay, so then our last... Category. Last babies. Okay, so we've got a few different kinds here. Uh, well, a few different... Really, they're all the same. Um, so we've got Amish Paste from Baker Creek, which I don't want to grow this year. Okay. Okay, so... Um, I want, like, I understand that it's the same variety. Um, sorry. You did have bad luck with these ones? Yeah. So they didn't do great. Um, I would rather give Southern Exposure Seed Exchange a try, but I want these as a backup. Okay. One, one of the two of these. Whichever. I mean, these... I don't know what this means. I feel like they're basically the same. This is just burpee trying to be fancy. Very, Very fancy. A uh, stabilized cross open pollinated between the original Roma variety and California red top VR9 where Roma had, oh my gosh Roma had fusifarium wilt resistance the addition of California red top VR9 to the line gives this variety its verticillium resistance that's good to know um that might be what happened with Jennifer's tomatoes last year so do we want to give it to these ones I think they're unopened so we got all of them in here as the backup. Sure. Now this one does also specify that it's container friendly. Um, mm. One plant per, oh, per 24 inch container. Oh mm. no. That's a right. huge container, so we'll do it in the ground anyway. Okay, yeah. so then giving it to the Roma VFs. The very fancies. The V fancies. I'll put this one in the maybe just because I don't want to get rid of them. Well, well, we're not getting rid of any seeds, just to be clear. Right. Okay, just they're being set aside for future use. Okay, um, so we'll come right back and talk about what we need to buy. All right, so this is going to be the smallest seed shop we've ever done. I'm very proud of us. Yeah. Okay, so the final list for what we need for this year is chamomile, a variety of sweet corn, which we should probably do a little more research on that. And yes. we're absolutely not getting their loom variety. No, basic, Your small, basic corn. small plot friendly corn. Yes. Um, and then amazing cauliflower, um, which is an heirloom, but claim it's easy to grow. So we'll see. Uh, Napa cabbage, if we can find it, because we couldn't find it this past year. A variety of beefsteak tomato, again, not doing an heirloom this year. Um, and then the 4th of July hybrid tomato. Um, and that's it. We'll have other garden things that we need to buy. Ooh, it might be a good idea to put one for Alex if he picks something that we don't have. We should also select something for Judah. And we can also let Judah pick something out. Okay. We'll just put him in front of the gurney stand at Home Depot and let him grab a packet. Oh my god. And <laughs> that's what it'll be. We'll see how it does. So Alex, of course, is old enough to pick out and appreciate 
whatever we buy. Judah is literally a baby, so. He will try to eat whatever packet of seeds he picks up. <sighs> he eats everything. Okay. That is our seed list. There will be other things that we need to buy, things like inoculants. We also discussed changing how we're going to do the garden beds and instead of building beds and like screwing the pieces together, just doing what we did at the old house because um, we both really liked the paver stone setup. Yeah. I don't know what else to call them. Um, they were these garden bed specific um, paving stones or like concrete blocks that had notches in the side. Uh, at 90 degree angles where you could line boards up. Yeah, like that. So this is like a top-down view of what they'd look like. So you'd just slot boards in like that. Um, and you were good to go. And they also had a hole in the middle so that if you needed to stake them down, you could use a uh, piece of rebar. Yeah, which I think we did, or we, we tried to do. No, we did, we did for sure. Yeah. Um, kept them from moving. Uh, there was some slight bowing on the would but uh, it worked out really well so I think we'll do that again and they were only a, a dollar or two a piece yeah so definitely going this with this and then we'll have some of the wood left over to be able to build more beds anyway um so here's what we've got so we've got our call me maybes our yes queens and then our nah fans so I think we did a pretty good job this did end up being um a lot of the like previous no thank you seeds we ended up not actually going through all of them which i think is fine um this is manageable remember that a lot of these are duplicate packets so there's a lot of like multiple bean varieties for example yeah one of these boxes is all one bean so dragon tons probably yeah that's the seed inventory baby we did it and that does it for our seed inventory for 2023 for the 2024 growing year. Thanks so much for stopping by Little Acre Homestead and for subscribing, and we'll see you again very soon. See you next time.